So in this video we're looking at charging, or, well, I don't know if you can say charging is the right word, but charging and discharging an inductor, um, where you're building up the um, magnetic field, um, and what happens to the current and the voltage um, over time. So, to begin with, um, we need to just consider a very simple circuit. Um, we've got a, a DC supply, and we'll have a switch to turn it on and uh, we'll have a resistor and an inductor and that's all, let's keep it really simple um, we consider the voltage of the supply across there and we consider the voltage of the inductor across there there's the voltage across the resistor as well from there to there and now let me switch this on, close the switch initially you have a high rate of change of um, flux or rate of change of current so that's when your induced voltage in the inductor is going to be maximum Okay, um, and uh, it's, it's important to remember that that voltage is opposing the uh, supply so the voltage again across the inductor and the voltage across the supply are in opposition to each other that is, the voltage across the inductor will be negative with respect to the voltage across the supply. So, um, what we might say is, because um, we've got two voltages working against each other, and we've got a total sum of that voltage, which will actually be the voltage across the resistor, we would say the voltage across the resistor equals the voltage across the supply minus the voltage across the inductor. And that's just obvious, it makes sense. And obviously, um, the total current in the circuit times that resistance is going to be um, equal to VR, so minus VL, that's that's a useful equation. They often don't give you formula for this, uh, or equations or anything like that. Um, you, you kind of have to build on your knowledge of Faraday's law and uh, what's happening in the circuit and um, Ohm's law and so forth. But anyway, we want to look at, um, so that, that's the voltage in the circuit, that's what's happening. We want to look at current versus time for charging. So if we look at the current versus time, initially um, the current's going to be zero because when it's, the switch is open, as soon as you close the switch it's going to start to rise and that's when maximum opposition to the current flow is going to be but it's also when um, maximum uh, push, I guess, or imbalance um, from the lack of current in the circuit and the drive from the power supply is there you're going to get a rapid increase in current that's going to ta tail off and that maximum is the maximum current of the circuit um, when VL equals zero. Um, and this is the same as with capacitors. You have a time constant, and that is approximately 63% uh, in fact, it is 63% of your maximum current. That would be IMAX up here. So, not like the movie theaters. But that's IMAX up here. Uh, my axis just wasn't tall enough. There we go. Um, so 63% of the changes takes um, uh, one time constant. A second time constant would be 63% of the remaining change. Then after about three, four, five time constants, you're basically at the maximum. Um, now, what what you might like to note on this is that the time constant um, it's going to be proportional to the inductor or the inductance, self-inductance. Um, and it's actually divided by the resistance this time. Whereas with the capacitor, you saw it was the time constant was the capacitance times the um, resistance, T equals RC. This time it's divided because you'll see if you have a higher resistance, that's going to reduce that initial current from the supply. So a higher resistance is going to have an initial reduction of current from the supply, and that's going to mean that you have less response from the inductor. Okay, so um, it's going to be... Um, shorter, that means so higher resistance means a shorter time constant, so it's going to reach its peak earlier, which is what you'd expect when you've got a higher resistance, okay, due to that opposition. It's because the greater the change in current, or the lower the resistance between turning off and on, um, then, uh, so the greater the change in current between off and on, the greater the induced voltage. Okay, I'm not going to labour that, I'm just going to rip through the rest of these graphs. So that's current uh, against time when you're charging. Um, you could imagine that voltage against time um, when you're charging across the the um, uh, resistor would would um, would follow this. So voltage against time for the resistor, but we're considering uh, voltage across uh, the inductor. So this is VL and VL. 
So the voltage across the inductor against time. Um, what do you think would happen there? Well, initially it has to be maximum, because that's when the maximum changes, going from zero to something. And this time it's going to drop. If that doesn't go below zero, it just hits the, the asymptote at the bottom there. And again, same thing, thing drop of 63%, one time constant. Okay, I'm not going to labour that because that's been in the capacitance videos. So um, now we need to look at discharging. I don't know if discharging is the right word, but when you turn it off, um, let's redraw our circuit. Um, here's our circuit here. Um, same, here's our switch. Um, this one's a little bit trickier though because when you turn it off, you kind of need a pathway for it to run through. So maybe we'll have it going from this way to this position. So that off is that way, and we can have current continuing to run through here. So we've got our resistor R, we've got our inductor. We can have an iron core in the center to make that improve if we want. And um, this this pathway here, when we switch it off, the switch goes to here, provides a pathway for the current to go through. So if that pathway is not there, no matter what you do, you're not going to have any current flow, but you will probably get sparks and things produced around the switch um, as you as you turn it off, which can be quite dangerous. But anyway, um, let's get on with it. We've got um, uh, voltage across the sorry current in the circuit against time. Remember this is discharging or when you're turning it off. Um, current has to start off with maximum once again because you're starting from an on position and you're turning it off and it's going to drop rapidly and it's going to be boom like that, that shape. Again 63% one time constant. Um, when you're considering the voltage across the um, resistor um, that's going to follow the current across the current through the resistor due to Ohm's law. Um, going back to the voltage across the inductor, VL here, um, that also is going to drop because that's proportional to the current. Okay, that's proportional to the change in current, I should say. So the maximum change is right at the start, and um, your minimum change is right at the end, so you're going to get the same effect here going on, and the same, exactly the same, 63% one time constant. Nice exponential thing going on there. And that's pretty much it, charging and discharging. Um, yeah, we'll get some examples out if um, we get a chance.